at the end of the day guys i need enough to take this out of the story with me i tell you know sometimes everybody goes through their storms there there's gonna be a season in your life when you have to go through your storm and remember at the end of the day while you're going through your storm just know that god i gonna bring you through that storm because that storm is building you and preparing you for something greater for something better when you're going through your storm not get depressed not get sad even if you get depressed and get sad try bring yourself out of that attitude look at it and say all right may i go through that storm how can i make this storm work for me what can i take out of that storm to build me i saw you have to look on your storms and your season when you're going through them don't look at them like something where come for break you yeah come for break you but don't allow it to break you it can actually build you instead of breaking you Welcome back to my channel. I'm when you're feeling down and your mind is under pressure, don't you worry, cause I know it will get better. So speak life and it will turn out in your favor. Just wanna let you know that this will make you stronger. You know, see the house yet, claim it. If you know see the money yet, claim it. If you know see the land yet, claim it. If you know see the job yet, claim it. If you know see promotion yet, if you know see the business yet, if you know see the car yet, if you know see the hey. Hey subscribers, welcome back to my channel and if you are new to the family, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below and click your notification bell so you don't miss any uploads, okay? Um, in this video, I'll be sharing with you guys how I dropped out of university. Um, so you guys know my channel is all about sharing my stories, my triumphs and my um disappointments and so this one was a big disappointment for me before i go any further hi guys yes so now i have braces um yeah i'm gonna drop that clip here i did a vlog but i didn't know if i should upload it so i might just put it in here so you guys can see it So yeah guys, I got braces, um, a little update, they don't really hurt when you're doing it, um, but um, since I did them on when, when did I do these on Friday, since I got them done on Friday, it has been really painful, um, I have to be taking a lot of um, pain medications, a lot of Advil, a lot of Cataflam, um, yeah and i have been getting the um it has been scraping my jaw here so i have to go back because um it's probably they said the wires are something they wrong with it so the wires need to go charge or whatever um yeah so i got braces moving on so the story is about how i just out of university yeah so let's get into that okay so we have to gonna backtrack to a lot of years um i graduated from high school in 2009 fun fact about me i used to attend the excelsior high school i think i mentioned that before um yes i used to attend the excelsior high school i graduated high school with nine c -tech subjects um i got three ones five twos and a three um i got a scholarship i went to six farm at excelsior high did one year in sixth form and decided that hey I'm wasting my time in sixth form I think I should go to university so I left sixth form and I before I left sixth form I was applying to uh, Barbados I was applying to Cave Hill campus in Barbados UE Cave, in Cave Hill campus in Barbados um, because I, my career goal was to become a meteorologist and so uh Kville is the only university or the only university yet that's in the Caribbean that um 
has a bachelor's degree in meteorology. Um, Jamaica doesn't have it, and so I, I had to look to go to Cave Hill in Barbados. Um, I applied. Um, I don't remember if I got any response from them. Um, I know it was a lot of back and forth, and I had to pay a lot of money. And because I wasn't in Barbados, of course, I had to be sending my documents through FedEx and all of that and all of that. It was a really tedious process. I remember I was young. I was just coming out of um, sixth form. Um, so that, that was a total fail. I was with my sister at the time and I remember talking to this young lady um, and a group of um, her friends, they were going to UTEC and they were doing um, land surveying and because I had a knack for geography and IT and um, physics and all of those subjects that I did that I loved, um, I had to think, I had to rethink what it is that I wanted to do in terms of doing a degree and so it turned out that I say you know what um surveys are like something that I'd like to do um I checked it out they they did a lot of geography a lot of math um a lot of IT because they did the AutoCAD part of it where you can um map um houses and stuff and the land area and all of that so I said um okay it looked like something that we can like because I love IT um love geography um physics love physics and so I said okay you know let me see we can do this and so I applied to UTEC to do um surveying with the bachelors in surveying when I applied um I was told that I could not i had to do a prerequisite and so i i don't remember i remember going to utec i don't even remember if i did a prerequisite course i don't know i don't remember but i remember when i applied um my parents didn't have money to send me to university that's number one so let me get that one all the way they did not have the money um and so my father um, my, my father is a blessed man let me tell you my father was where he was where he was working um one of the persons that lived there um wrote him a check for my school fee because i guess he asked i didn't know he was doing all of this but he went and he asked and he got a check to pay my school fee for one year at utec so Bef I couldn't get into the degree program to do land surveying because I did not have two units of cake. So because I didn't have that and I couldn't go back to sixth term because I already left, I had to do a uh, associate degree in, um, I don't remember what they call it, but it's surveying something on it else. But it was, it was like, if you do that court that associate degree you could get into the degree program and so i said okay let me just go and do this associate degree and so i went and i did it um because i did some case subjects i was exempted from a lot of subjects a lot of courses and so um after completing that one year i was actually the top girl in um the course at the time and um I remember when it was time to do the second year, I could not afford to do it. But the person that sponsored me for first year, um, that person no longer lived where my daddy worked, and so I didn't, I wasn't able to get sponsored. But backtracking a little bit, now that I talk about sponsor, um, I remember when I originally wanted to apply to university, I my original thought was to go through student loan and so i went on their website i filled out all the necessary um i filled out all the necessary documents and i i knew that i needed two guarantors at the time and so i asked um uh somebody a friend of mine if he could be my guarantor i went and i asked him if he could be my guarantor thinking that um they saw my potential say so yeah they go you know this is no biggie he might go he might go he might go be my guarantor but surprise to me he asked me how much it was gonna be and so when i told him he couldn't do it and 
yeah that's far too look at so then you see why but now when we reached um second year now i couldn't afford to go second year and so um my daddy could have come through again with the with the grants and so um i was forced to find a job and so there it was i had to find a job so i dropped out of university first year in my associate degree i found a job i was working in the library slash the office um that was my first job and so I did pretty well at it they were very pleased at all the work that i did and i had very high hopes and very good prospects at that job but um i wasn't getting paid a lot of money and you know you're, you're gonna need money and so um i remember one day i was in the office and um a parent uh came to the office and she saw me and i don't remember how the conversation come up and she she, she asked me um what i was doing here i don't know how the conversation go but i remember telling her how much subjects i have and all of that and all of that and so um she asked me what i was doing there i might say it's my first job it's the only one i could get and she was a general manager for an for a company at the time and so she told me to send in my resume and my documents to the office and i did that and in about um two to three days i was working at that office i was working at her company so she took me on immediately and I, and that was a blessing for me and i'm always i will always and forever be grateful to that um, woman for um seeing my potential and actually giving me an opportunity um and yeah so i started working at that company i stayed there for a year and a couple months do I remember how long probably yeah a year and couple months and so when i left there i left there with the hopes of working in aviation so i started working at the airport when i left there to work in aviation i thought after doing the interview at the airport i thought based on what was said to me i thought the salary would have been way more than what i was getting at the company it turned out that it wasn't all that high um it wasn't all that higher than what i was getting probably even less at some point because at some points when um you don't do a lot of flights you you know you always get caught because you get paid by the or one whatever whatever anyway and so i wasn't getting as much pay as i used to and um I remember being there and I went but I loved my job I loved working at the airport I enjoyed working with the airline even though for me and I'm gonna say this because up to, up to this day this is exactly how I am for me even though I wasn't getting a lot of pay it wasn't always about the money for me yes we need money yes because i have bills to pay and and we have to eat and thing but it wasn't always the money for me even though i know i wasn't getting a lot more a lot of money than what i left my previous job for i love the atmosphere that i was working in i love the industry that i was in i was serving people and it was and i was just most of that do me and I made me feel good doing it and I loved my job. I remember I was in a training session and um I don't remember how there's a lot of things when I remember but may I go to the essence of the story <laughs> and so I don't remember how the conversation came up. I think the person who was in charge of the training she the person who was in charge of the training she was asking everybody to like say um what was their passion or something like that or if it's not passion it's regret something of the sort and so i remember saying that one of my passions was meteorology and i remember saying that i wanted to become a meteorologist that was my dream and i remember saying in the in the training that i wanted to study and i didn't get the opportunity i remember telling the whole story in that training i don't know why she got asked me that question day but me get a meet in the training and my story she told me that the story touched her so much so after the training she came to me i don't remember if it was after the same time she said to me she knew somebody in um 
in um, airports are trying to reach she could talk to to see if I could get a tour of the Met Office and whatever and see if there's somebody I could talk to. She was a nice lady. She actually motivated me. She said, Karen, go for your dream. If it's something that you want, pursue it. And so um, she was trying to help me and I was I, I'm very appreciative for that woman for trying to assist me. Um, I don't remember how I, I I think she got me the contact information for Evan Thompson and she called me a matter of I remember she called me on the phone and she gave me the contact information I don't know how she get it but she get it and she gave it to me and I remember I was at work one day and I made a call to Mr. Thompson and at the Met Office and I remember talking to him, explaining to him, because when I was in grade 9 at Excelsior High School, that's the first time I met Mr. Thompson, and little did he know, he was the one that made me want to come into meteorology. Um, I remember in grade 9, they had a career day, and he came and he spoke on meteorology and all of that, and immediately, it grabbed my attention, it grabbed me, made me want it to, because before that, in 2004 when we had a hurricane Haiwana, I remember specifically I was looking through my window I was doing weather reports and if you anybody can ask my mother no my mother can tell her that I was looking through my window doing weather reports writing and the winds are swaying the trees and the winds are going 60 miles per hour and that was me in about 2004 while Ivan was going on so when I was in grade 9 and he came and he did the um because I think at the time I was mimicking the weather reporters um and I remember when he came and he did the interview on career day at Exeter I said yes at that moment so remember for those of you who are watching that went to excel i know that you know when they do career day at school that's when they they are helping you to choose a career so you know which subjects they need for going and thing and thing and they did that at excel and immediately when he do that when he did that 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 presentation on meteorology i said yes at that moment and so i picked my subjects from grade nine onwards around meteorology because that's what i wanted to study that was that's the career that i wanted to go in Anyway, so fast forward back to when I called Mr. Thompson. I explained to him where I met him first. I tell him, say, I met you at the career day at Excelsior and I did talk to you and he did tell me what subjects we need for do and whatever, whatever. And so he said I should send in my resume at to the Met Office, to the administrator. And so luckily at that time they were taking it. It's like, let me tell you. You see, when God put you in some position, you don't know why you didn't put the position where you're in. A. At the end of the day, guys, man, you don't know if you set this out of the story with me, I tell you now. Sometimes, everybody goes through their storms. There, There's going to be a season in your life when you have to go through your storm. And remember, at the end of the day, while you're going through your storm, just know that God is going to bring you through that storm. Because that storm is building you and preparing you for something greater, for something better. When you're going through your storm, not get depressed, not get sad. Even if you get depressed and get sad, try to bring yourself out of that attitude. Look at it and say, alright, may I go through that storm? How can I make this storm work for me? What can I take out of that storm to build me? I saw you have to look on your storms and your season when you're going through them. Don't look at them like something where come for break you. Yeah, it come for break you, but don't allow it to break you. It can actually build you instead of breaking you. And so I found myself in that situation going to work at the airport not knowing that going to work at the airport was pushing me towards what it is that I wanted never know so God are working at a pipeline to bring me to way mama for day yeah and that's what I'm saying so I called and at that specific mo moment when I made that call the Met Office was taking on new persons listen don't play with God and I started mess up people so I remember calling the administrator I was told to send in my resume and application letter for the job I was a little skeptical and I was praying at the time I said God please let me get the job please let me get the job and you know one of the other things I want to know because me do some after this and I'm gonna let you guys know that this is sometime in our life you have to step out in faith if there was something you know where you really were you have to step out in faith 
immediately when I sent in that application and, and, and the resume, people they call me to set up an interview and so when they call me to set the interview and everyone would do for me i immediately resigned from my job at the airport with the airline company i immediately resigned my job i'm a step out in a fit i remember i resigned my job in the october in the october guys i did the interview in uh, probably was uh, late october or november what was i them? And guys, my, my, let me tell you this. I did not start working at the Met Office until February in 2013. This was 2013. This was, I left the job in 2012, October 2012 with the airline. And I didn't start working at the Met Office until February 2013. So I was at home for the remaining, the remain, the remainder of October 2012, November 2012, December 2012, and January 2013. And then in February, I started working at the Met Office. So I was at home for three months. And during that, this three months while I was at home, nothing for me now. I wonder if I make a mistake, you know. Because I remember, you know, I resigned the work. I resigned the people in work. And said, I step out in a film because I forget that job here. You understand? Me left the people them work. So when me there home now in at the time, the November, December, January period, me not have money in no people. I was living with my boyfriend at the time who is not my husband and me I tell you say sometimes I want them I say and I get the call from them yet me I say no, me not get the call later, whatever, whatever. I'm keep on a call and me I say, is there any information? No, them not get the information. So I started to wonder, me I say God, I wonder if I wrong choice to make when me gone left my job and me not get the other work yet. But I stepped out in faith. And even though I step out in a faith, I still have doubts, you know, but I know somebody step out in a faith because I know somebody forget it. But then, when my sister things not working at the pace for me wanted for work, you know, me start to have doubts and I wonder if I the right decision I made. Anyway, I got the call to, to start working and so I started working on the Met Office in February 2013 and since working at the Met Office, I professionally, I have built myself professionally. I have built my knowledge, I have built my leadership skills, I have built my, I mean I know I'm gonna build, listen, I'm going go every training possible. Every training that I could get myself on, I'm on it. I give of myself so much so till even the people that you work with will see your potential. So when I start working somewhere, people, give your all to your job. I not say your faith. Go beyond the end five o'clock or whatever that I have left work, you know. But do your best at what it is that you do. That's in a sense, that's what I mean. Do your best. Never give less than your best. Because if you do that, people, they will see your potential and they will start investing in you. I got a promotion in January 2018. And then I was promoted in February again, 2020, for the second supervisor position. So... So sad is to say, guys, you never know what, and I'm working in the Met Office. I actually, this was the career that I wanted. Maybe not what I envisioned in terms of being a meteorologist, but it's the career that I wanted to, to go in from. I was just a little girl look, being in Hurricane Ivan, watching the weather, listening to the weather, because Hurricane Ivan was my first experience and um, of a hurricane, and it made me want it to be a meteorologist. I don't know what the people in the panel news and the matter the weather, but it grabbed me. And so that was a career that I wanted. And it just turned out that God just worked my life around so that I found myself in that um, career. But for go back to the first part of the story that I was talking about where I dropped out of university. So I actually dropped out of university the first time in 20... 10 in 2015 i decided that i was gonna go back to school because i'm in a stable job i think my team can go back at school and so 
I tried to go back to school again and I dropped out. So I remember when I went back to finish the second year in the associate degree that I was in, um, I couldn't, I went and I was doing this out of faith, guys, me hope that I could have get through the scholarship, I got a school, I applied for scholarship and um, I even went to try to get a work on campus to see if I could have, you know, work and pay for my school fee. I applied for the course. I applied to do the second year, and so I remember them give a certain timeline before you say you can pay your school fee, and so um, I didn't pay it. I didn't get the funds paid in time, and so I I dropped out. This is before I started working at the Met Office. Yes, that I tried to do go back to do my second year. The, so that was the second time of me dropping out and in 2015 i said you know what okay i'm doing a stable job me i work with government i went and i applied for a tertiary loan from the government to see if i could fund myself to go back to school the funding was not the issue this time people i remember i couldn't i didn't want to go back and do the associate degree of course so i went and i i spoke to the the program at the program administrator at the time i remember telling him that i applied to the course already i did the associate degree i had this credit i had that credit and so he said that um he would he would he was he would put I'm not my window, but I was able to enroll in the first in the bachelor's degree for the first year bachelor's degree program and so I was enrolled in that in the bachelor's degree program this time around and I was going I had to apply for for I had to apply for day release or study leave from my organization through the through the the ministry and i was unable to get it because at the time they say i didn't have enough vacation leave or i didn't have enough leave or whatever so i wasn't able to get study leave or day release to go to my classes that posed the issue so this time around it wasn't money this time around it was time and the program that i was doing for some people them can do them course part-time then where them can go five o'clock or whatever our weekends to so this specific course that i wanted to do was which was servant land surveying they didn't have a part-time to it it was a full-time bachelor's degree program you have to do it in the day class starting at the morning and done about five o'clock the entire day every day and so I couldn't get the time off from work to go and so some I missed a lot of my classes um, I had to depend on a friend that I found in the class to give me notes and would send him notes them to me him not email them to me and that is how I used to I, I got to study for some of my, 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 my classes and um, even though I was getting the notes you know yeah if in a their class it don't make no sense. When you're there university in a dark class, it don't make no sense. I mean, I got to go to some of the classes because my supervisor at the time, he was, um, he, he allowed me to go to some of the classes, like the one them where they close to and work through for over. I was allowed to go and sometimes if it's my madam beggar one who have to run go per you take remember i work in alfredshire road me have to run go per you take stay a class for a one or a two hours and come back hours. So i to use my lunch time go to class and come back take a milk take what i could i get out of the class and so i passed a couple of my courses but i did, i failed a number of my courses as well i tried again to go back that's the essence so i tried three times and I failed miserably at it and I had to pay off a tertiary loan that I did not use but that's even I guess I never use it but I never really get no benefit out of it and it's not for nobody part it was just a um, situation and so I had to pay off that loan knowing that I never get for finish I never get for complete it or anything and it was a total mess and disappointment for me if it was a disappointment for me guys i kid you not so i i tried to go back to university three times and i failed miserably some people want to probably ask so why you never try to do a different course so you can do part-time you see for me 
for me, I knew what I wanted. I'm not going to do no course for me to say, it not going to help me in the long run because it's not, it's not my passion. I'm not just want a degree for have a degree in MCA. No. If I'm going to do a degree, I want to do a degree with someone I know say, I'm going to like and it not, not, it not going to force me to do a second degree because I don't like the first one I do. No. No. I know a lot of people who go and do degrees for courses because they think they're easy. And when they don't do their degree, they don't use it. They can't they don't want to get the work because they don't like it. Or do three years in, them say, you know, I'm not like this. I'm go switch course and then go start what it. No. So I wanted to do that. And that is why I, th I tried three times to do that degree program. Anyway, you know, yeah, some of you three times miserably. But the essence of this story, guys, is to let you know that it no matter if you feel three times are trying, never give up because me can tell you say me not give up. You see, if I three years on the line, five years on the line, me forget my degree, I'm gonna get it because it's on my vision board. I am going to get my bachelor's degree. I'm not going to stop a bachelor's degree. If you want me to get my momentum, I'm going to do my bachelor's degree. I'm going to do my master's. I'm going to do my PhD. So the world better look out for me. You get what I'm saying? That is how you need to talk to yourself. You need to believe in yourself. I'm telling you already, you need to believe in yourself. I believe in myself, you know. Come on, say if it take me 10 years, mega do it. And listen, this is another thing I'm gonna want to tell you. So listen, and it's for another video. But listen, don't make nobody make you feel like say you not achieve nothing. No make nobody put no timeline for your thing. No make nobody rush you. Do your thing in your own time. Do it how you see your life. I go take your time and do your thing. Take your time and build yourself. Most see people who are 40, 50, at get degree, then at university. So why you think that you have to rush yourself? Not because you don't have a degree now that I mean you can't get a degree. Yes, some people are fortunate to be able to get their degree right out of, right out of high school. Some people are very fortunate say two years after leaving them get a work and them can go go to school and, and, and go to work and finish their degree. But not everybody's that fortunate. Me never get that. Because of circumstances, but me no worse off. And even if I was worse off, me no say my time will come. Everybody has their time, you know. Everybody has their time. So at the end of the day, work at your own pace. Take your time and do your thing. No make nobody rush you. So yeah, that was my story. And the essence is, no make nobody rush you. Believe in yourself. Don't give up. Do not give up. If at two years after you try something and fail, try again. Never stop trying. Never stop trying. Be determined. There, these are some essential words me I go you know. Determination. Never stop trying. Um, be persistent. Believe in yourself. Have faith. Trust in a God. So many words me I go to people. Yeah, son. So yeah, in a sense, that's what this video was about. Um, I hope that by telling my story that I failed at university three times. But yes, still, I'm still here working on me, working on my professional life, working on my goals. See them when I get me not me not on a degree, but I was able to buy a car. I do all the other courses. I have a lot of professional courses, a lot of certificates, so I can use and say. I have these and we can get good jobs and care, me have care. I mean these are materialistic things, but at the end of the day they are there to make you comfortable as a person. You come yeah as a person I live and I work on one house and I can't buy no care and I can't buy no house. You know, I'm dead younger, you know, I have no money in a pocket and I mean I'm grateful that I don't have a degree but me have more than what some people have degree have so that's the essence of my child because don't surround in a life around degrees yes education is good education is good so even if you can't get free to do your degree guys you have courses online free courses some of them are paid courses for like 25 dollar and so what if i hundred us dollar they are talking 25 us of course even that if a $20 US, go pay the $20 and do it. If it's free, do it. Put it on your resume. You do the, you do the program, you do the certificate. Put it on. It's about building you professionally. 
stop making people make you feel like they've been on a degree you can't be nothing that is not true and yes the world is going into a era where degrees soon be outdated if you don't have a master's you can't get a work so at the end of the day you can't always bank upon all of those things build yourself entrepreneurship is a big feat that is going on now dive in it if you want to do some courses online to see how it can be if you be an entrepreneur go do it go do it guys you have to start thinking out the box you can't think on a regular level like usual you have to start thinking out the box what can i do to build me stop sit down and feel like say things are gonna drop in your lap it's not gonna drop in your lap you have to look for it you have to work hard be persistent for what you want if you're sitting at home you're not gonna get what you want if you're sitting and watch tv with popcorn in your hand or one biscuit or a piece of bread you're not gonna get where you are. You have to put in the work. You're there for your cell phone every day. Type in free courses, free online courses. All you get up and do a depend. You can't get up every day and depend on social media alone. Cause social media is not a bad thing because you have a lot of information on social media. But if you have to use the internet to your advantage, if you have to sit up on social media every day, make sure it say advertise your advertise that business. Or you look up information for, one, for one, one degree, one course, or one certificate, or something. You can't understand how you yourself so you can and get a big basket of goodies. No, it doesn't work like that. So guys, if you're new to my channel, please remember to click that subscribe button down below. And if you're my subscriber, again, welcome. And I hope that you guys can take away from this video something that is essential. Something we can motivate you, something we can build you. I want you guys to head on over to Facebook and please to join my Goal Achievers Club on Facebook. You can, it's a group, so you can search for it. The name of it is JWMKC Goal Achievers Club. Go ahead and join the club. In that club, we'll be talking all about how ways that we can achieve our goals and build ourselves. There are some questions that you're gonna have to have answer. Three questions actually. Me not asking all bag of things. These are three questions. The reason why you are joined the, the 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 group. What are you looking for in the group? And what do you want to be in the group? And the last question is, are you ready to start achieving your goals? All right. So go on over. It's JWMKC um, Goal Achievers Club, and it's on. Facebook. My Instagram handle is at Journey with Me KC, and, my, and I'll tag it down below. I'll put, actually put it down below in the description box so you guys can have these links um, at your fingertips. You don't have to be searching for anything. But thank you guys so much for joining me. It's my pleasure sharing my stories with you to inspire you and to motivate you to let you know that it's never over until God says it's over. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. When lessons are